It's April 17th, official Mustang Day. We're out here in Lakeland, Florida at Swan Brewing. I got the Mustang driver guys here, my man John Nichols, and this is Billy Turpin, and we're going to have a fun day with Mustangs. Guys, what do we got going on? So today we're celebrating uh, National Mustang Day, so we're celebrating the Mustang, but more importantly, we're celebrating all the people that, you know, live this lifestyle. So, you know, we're all about... The Mustang is a vehicle that basically we use to socialize, to meet new friends, and to go to restaurants and bars and just have a good time. So, so we're celebrating the lifestyle and the car at the same time. So that's what this is all about. So we're going to show you guys some of our favorite cars of the day. There's a great mix here. We also got Mark Houlihan, Mustang editor, ran into Donald Farr, a longtime Mustang author, magazine editor. A lot of my friends are here today. We're going to walk around. We're going to show you guys what's up. So come along for the ride. So let's go check out some of these Mustangs. Mark Houlihan's magazine build Fox Body. We'll go over this car later, and we got a feature coming up on that. Just some great stuff here. Yellow Mach 1, Dark Horse, 70 Mach 1 Mustang, one of my favorites. Some guy with a dirty GT350. This guy right here? Yeah. That one's mine. I'm more into driving it than cleaning it. But everybody knows that. Hey, let's check out his Fox body. Kind of blacked out. Ten holes with the blackout treatment. Testo North America is the world's largest manufacturer of handheld test and measurement instrumentation and software for HVAC, food safety, pharma compliance, and combustion analysis. And you can check out Testo at testo.com. It's got the five-speed manual. There's something about the LXs with the tailpipe that I just absolutely love. Super cool. Paratrooper. Damn, that's hardcore. Seventy one Mach one working with that three fifty one four speed. That Cleveland power. It's got the Marty report. Let's check out some of the details. Man, medium yellow gold. Four speed manual trans with her shifter. Power steering. Power disc brakes. Four thousand two hundred and twenty six dollars out the door. This is like Fox Body Basics 101 right here. 351 Windsor. Could be a bigger engine, but it's 351 based engine. Pretty simple. We'll build in progress. It's got five lug, five lug conversion. Copy of 50 Mustang magazine in there, stick shift. This is a little uh, little street ripper right here. Check this out, Abe. A lot of people always wonder how to tell the difference between a 302 and a 351 Windsor engine. You know what the easiest way to tell is? You look at the water pump right here, because the engines pretty much look the same. So you look right here, and if the cylinder head is basically right on top of the water pump bolt and boss right here, it's a 302. 351 has that extra deck height, and that's how you tell real quick whether you got a 351 or a 302 or a 289 looking good look at this 85 86 85 hey there's mark Houlihan. you need a magnifying glass for that well these are my previous prescription sunglasses i haven't gotten the, uh, right <laughs> just sneak that in there 
the world famous, world renowned. Oh, so, oh, so you're just gonna just jump right in, huh? Well, we were gonna interview you by your car, but since you're standing here, you know, oh, we this is we're in, we're on Mark's turf. We're in Lakeland. This is Mark's turf. This is in Tampa. Yeah, you're in my home. You got nothing witty to say? Come on, man. He's the king of wit. You just I left you flat footed there. Uh, you got me. You got me all. Uh, what's the uh, for Clemped? <laughs> What do you think of the show so far? Well, I've only walked about half of it because I got uh, caught, caught up with a couple of friends and we started talking about our cars. When you're world famous like him, it does take a while to. Oh, get through I, the I show. don't. I don't know about world famous. You know, Florida, Fl famous? Florida famous. At least one Is state. Thing? The southeast, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So no, it's beautiful day. Uh, beautiful cars. It's. Uh, I mean, a little bit of everything. We got a, everything from a dark horse to a 65 Mustang. So, I mean, if you, yeah. if you want to see, if you want to see all six, well, seven generations of Mustangs, you know, just point that camera down and just start walking. <laughs> we talked about what time you should start drinking and Mark's waiting a little bit, but I go by the theory, you can't drink all day if you don't start in the morning. Yes. Or, you know, or the famous, it's five o'clock somewhere. Yeah. But as my friends will tell you, Two beers and I'm flat out. So I, starting early doesn't really I do see. me a whole lot so, of good. So that's why you brought the wife so she can drive home. Yep. I got a couple <laughs> manual transmission drivers I can lay out in the back. It's a good life. And as I look over, check this thing out with the door handles. The door handles caught me. Yeah, th uh, those are uh, 71 to 73 Mustang door handles. See, only you would know that. Well, I know the shop that built this car. There you go. Yeah. Because we're on your turf. Yeah, it's got the TMI. Those are Fox Mustang seats with TMI covers on it that look like the uh, Pony or Deluxe interior. So yeah, even look at the door panels. So it's got like you know the Eleanor nose and the side exhaust, um, but with a stock '68 uh, hood and the Halibrand style wheels. It looks like like a almost a '67 GT. 350 500 is Shelby look to the hood. Yeah, it's uh, I think it's carbureted now. Yeah, yep. I know at one point they had fuel injection on it and it does have an AOD in it because he mm -hmm. wanted to be able to drive the car to shows. I actually haven't seen this car in a while. It's good to see it out. Yeah, we'll just walk with Mark. He knows all the cars here. Yeah, for sure. You've got uh, people that uh, love to dress them. I mean, obviously, twin turbos doesn't hurt either. No. <laughs> but, yeah, you'll see uh, the cars around here. And, and, you know, maybe maybe uh, it doesn't leave the uh, county line. I don't know. Maybe Tampa cars are more about horsepower. But uh, here, in the, here in the middle of the state, uh, it's a lot of, uh, lot of uh, chrome and polish. And the, uh, the cars really... They really want to stand out, and we'll see a lot of them. Well, like we've got yeah, that's that's you know, we, like we've got the vertical doors and the vinyl wrap and uh, the whole Star Wars theme. I, I I can guarantee you, even though it's daylight, I guarantee you that car probably has underglow and lights in the grill and stuff right. like that. You know, and you know, to each their own. Everybody has a style. You know, um, a couple of cars on air ride. You know, like like this white one here. Um, love to get them down low and slammed for, for their display. Look at the detail work in the headlight. Yeah. You don't see that every day. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Look at that. That is just wild. Yeah, you have to bake the headlight to get the lens separated from the backing. Right. And, of course, you have your airbrush work, or maybe that's hydro dip, you know. And then they... Airbrushed. Airbrushed? There's no hydro or wrap on the car. There you go. Air, there you go. Full airbrush. And he's got Pro Charger Pro on charger. it, so... Not just the looks, but it's got the power too. Yep. We got some police activity. Mark, did you do anything illegal this morning? Not yet, but right. the day is young. There, sure there is that. that. Roush Mustang with a lot of details. I'm cool with like these fully modded cars as long as you stick with a theme. I like a theme. Oh, yeah. When yeah. you got the multiple themes going on, I get a little bit lost. There's your lights under the front. You were calling that right out. Yep. Well, you can see. The Lord Darth Vader right here on the center of the hood, so they must be they must be big fans of the dark side. You know what? Maybe their next purchase is a dark horse. You big fan of SVOs? Oh yeah. When I 
Many moons ago, in a previous life, when I worked uh, as a dealer tech, believe it or not, the guy that did our lube rack, our oil change guy, had an, an SVO. Right. And, you know, that was, back then, it was a two, three-year-old car. You know, he bought it off the used car lot and quite, didn't quite know what he had. And it was uh, jalapeno red, uh, cloth interior, no sunroof, pretty basic SVO. Right. You know? And uh, I remember he was... You know, this is South Florida, you know, back to like Hollywood, Fort Lauderdale area where I used to live. Right. He drove up to Disney to, I guess, visit family or something. Okay. And the timing belt went out. Oh. It was on the side of I-95. I grabbed a couple tools, a new timing belt from the parts counter, drove like two and a half hours up there, put the timing belt on on the side of the road. And he was on his way. On his way. Mark, Mark what, can fix what, anything. I've what, seen him in action. Well, but what, I was get, what I'm getting at is what kind of car... You know, because these are not non-interference. These 2.3 liter right. engines. So what kind of car can you blow a timing belt, not hurt a valve or anything like that, put a timing belt on on the side, side of the road and get back on the road? Yeah, usually yeah. if you lose any kind of timing chain or timing belt, yeah. it's valve and piston. Yeah, you're pulling heads and yep. and opening the wallet, you know. So back then, I want to say the timing belt was probably 20, 30 bucks. Right. You know, and it's, you know, gas and whatnot up there and, and save the day. So, yeah, I've always loved these these uh, these two threes or 2300s. And you got the rare convertible hardtop. Yep. The original idea behind this was it was going to be a, a factory option across the board. Right. So you get, you know, a red or blue or whatever with the removable hardtop, and it ended up being uh, available only on the 95 Cobra uh, in black and they with the tan, or, or excuse me, saddle interior, and uh, they only made 499 of them. Uh, this is my buddy James's car, this, this coupe. Uh, you didn't make it to uh, the... Uh, Foxes in the forest up at NPD, did nope. you? Yeah, that, that's James. Had, James had his his car there, um, and then uh, I love this white coupe. Yeah, Roush RS3 with the black roof. Yeah, I've seen this car before. This thing's really clean. Yeah, that's my buddy Nick here. That's his white coupe. Great car. Thank you. Thank you. Just just upgraded the wheels on it. Yep. 363s running Holly EFI on it. Nice. Yeah. We, we were commenting on this thing earlier. It's like just yeah, perfect car, fully done, front to back. Like well. Did, did you see the Recaros well, in it? Oh yeah. With the rivets. I saw that. He, but we're talking about Nick's car and the wheels and everything, and then we're like, and you go to the pure hardcore just street, the raw racer. street racer. Yeah. All original. Get it done. <laughs> all original. A to B. That's all that matters. 255. Yeah. Ain't got no AZ. 260, 260 <laughs> air. Yeah. Yep. What motor is in it? I mean, I That's know a it's a Windsor, but it's 427. Okay. Yeah. It's a nine second. Nine, nine second car. That's kind of what I was getting it's at. 640 to the wheel. Okay. There you go. <laughs> 640 to the wheel. Manual trans. Having fun. Six speed. Yeah. Edit that out. We, we, we don't street race around here. No. Yeah. I just know some. Some cars that I've been up against, or this right. car's been gotcha. up against, and it's okay, man. to the track, and it whoops them. So I know it's somewhere in the Timed acceleration time runs. So what yes. we do. NMRA style at the yeah. track. Yes. Cool, man. We're out just testing the transmission, making sure it gets yeah. all the gears. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 640 at the wheels. We know the weight. We can figure it out. Yeah. yeah. We can do the math. Oh, here we go, Mark. Walk up here. We got to check this out. I need your opinion. All right, Mark, I'm putting you on the spot. 21 versus 71. Or 71. But we'll go with this particular Mach 1 because it kind of checks all the boxes. Cleveland, four-speed, and then, you know, 2021 Mach 1. And I'll even go, like, a stock one. This one's obviously got the full Star Wars theme. Which would you rather have? Which would you rather have? Well, I haven't seen... I haven't seen the new Mach 1 in a movie yet. Okay. Whereas we all know this one has been in Diamonds Are Forever. Okay. So, so you fully like it's got to be a movie car? No, no. But I mean, you know, you think about, you know. Um, I'm talking about you're out there driving, you're rowing gears, or could have your 10-speed auto in that one. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. Is, is it a stick? It, yeah. Recaro's. Yes. Track pack. I mean, this has got six speed. This is a fun car to drive on yeah. track. Yeah. That's an 11 second car. This is probably a 13, low 14, high 13 second car, mid 13s with a Cleveland. It's not a Boss 51. You know, and every situation is going to be a little different. If I didn't have 
a vintage Mustang already, right? I'd probably go for the 71 just to have a vintage car in the collection. Okay. But Understood. since I already but since I already have a 66 Mustang, right? And I don't have an S550 at all. And what better S550 other, you know, maybe the GT350 are, right. but a Mach 1 I, I think I'd have to go with the, the, the 21. See, I'd, I'd have to add the 21 to the collection. And based on your theory, I got a GT350, a modern one. I'd go for you, that. Yeah. Because my GT350 drives similarly to this. Even yeah. though uh, when it comes to new Mustangs, you can keep your 2024. I would rather have a Mach 1. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, when you, I mean, you, you of all people know this, but for those watching the video, you know, Ford has famously used the trickle down uh, uh, technology. Yes. So, you know, you get like your top of the line GT350R and the specific, uh, you know, pilot tires, the, 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 uh, the uh, rack calibration, yep. uh, the steering shaft, all that stuff to make that such a great track car, driver's car. And then, you know, that's what, 2016, 2015 was the first R's. Yep. So, you know, over the years that trickles down to you know the Mach 1s and the GT 500s and and eventually even the GTs and the EcoBoost cars those oh, no cars you know, yeah so um, you know it's great technology to have a car like that you could drive to work every day and then you know we're what hour just under two hours from Sebring we'll take it to Sebring for for a track day or something all right Mark we're walking up to your car but we got to stop because we found a couple that we both dig so before we get to Mark's Fox body Mischievous purple, which is just a cool name for a color. You got to get that just right in the in the in the light, otherwise it looks black. But yep, that's kind of like the lava red they did. I had a lava red press car once, and for the first three days I had it, I thought it was a black car. Oh uh, yeah, the lava red was what uh, 2013. Yep. Yeah, 2013, one year only color, and you're right, just just like this. If it, it's it was such a dark red, and it had the red seat uh, and door panel inserts too on that car. So right. yeah, this this is a beautiful color. This my wife wants mischievous purple. It just sounds cool. Yeah. Then we got two classics here. This is a '65, obviously. I'm not sure if that's a '65 or six. Mark Mark's the king of these. Yeah. This this is uh, John Tivnan's '65. Uh, he actually got my um, popular vote or VIP judge vote for this car la at this show last year. Right. Uh, beautiful car. The, the black paint is spotless. I kind of dig the torque thrusts, but... Yep, it's a very classic look. It's got the uh, five dial cluster, really cool little uh, billet clamp on, um, tack adapter there, the hearse shifter. The silver on this one looks spectacular though, and I love the factory wheel. Yeah, this is a 66. Well, you got the five dial cluster with the wood grain. Yep. What a cool angle looking at it from back here. Fastback. You know, I've always said with the 65.6 Fastback, if you if you get the the rear three-quarter angle just right, like, you know, if you get down low, like, almost like you're sitting in a chair. Right. And, and, and squint a little bit. I know you can't squint the camera, but those that are watching squint. It looks like an Austin Martin. It has that. Like a DB5. Like an old like DB5 an old, yeah. look. Yeah. Which I saw one of those yesterday. Yeah? Yeah, in silver at uh, UTC. You need did, to come down did, to that did it, show. Did it have the machine guns? And it the, was not the bonded out. It was not <laughs> bonded out. It was actually one of the few I've seen in real, in, in the wild, we'll call it, that was not like f fully done up with the James Bond treatment. It was actually left-hand uh, steer as well. Yeah, th this is a really clean car. Yeah, that's fantastic. Look at the air Un conditioning. Underdash air, uh, the full console, the deluxe wheel. I mean, my 66 has a lot of the same parts. The, uh, the pistol grip, uh, door handles, those came off the Thunderbird. Okay. Where you grip them and pull straight back. Right. And, and Yellow Mach 1. I, you know, I dig these. They were cool. Yeah. Let's check out your machine. Well, we got Donald Farr's 66 GT hard top. Yep. Got the old school South Carolina plate on the front. We dig it from the dealer. Well, that, that's his grandfather's car that he bought new. Yep. So it's always stayed in the family. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta find Donald. Uh, uh, he's probably it somewhere inside. I see him walking over there. Yeah. All right, Mark. I know the story on this car because you've owned this car since new. Mark and I worked together at Muscle Mustangs and Fast Forwards, and we've just known each other forever. He's been a magazine guy pretty much as long as I have. And yep. in the game. Started in 92 with Mustang yep. Monthly. My yep. first year was 92 as well. Yep. And you've owned this car, you bought it new, 
and it was your daily driver for the longest time when we were at the magazine. Well over 20 years. Yep. So I, I drove, uh, you know, from here, Lakeland to to, to uh, Tampa, uh, 10 years every day on, on I-4, which is labeled one of the most dangerous highways in America. It is. Uh, and, and, and thankfully never had an accident. <laughs> nope, and we used to break Mark's chops relentlessly because he can fix anything, but he just refused to fix his air conditioning. So well, you come would, into work sweaty back and everything. I wouldn't say refuse. It's like, you know, the cobbler's house has the kids have no shoes, oh, yeah. or the plumber's house has the leaky pipes, you know. I was always fixing someone else's junk, like like Michael Johnson's, and never... <laughs> And never had time for my own car. Who's so. not here to defend himself today? Yeah, He's yeah. working at the NMRA. Yeah, right? him and Steve Turner are both up at the NMRA rates. We miss you guys. Yep. Um, but yeah, I actually special ordered the car uh, back when I was a dealer tech. Uh, I had a 66 Mustang that was my daily driver. Uh, it was it was destroyed in, a, in an accident. Not, not my fault. And uh, I was looking at, you know, what are the currently available V8 rear-wheel drive vehicles from Ford. You know, I'm a right. Ford guy through and through. So back then it was like Lincoln Mark 7, too expensive. Uh, Mercury Cougar, mm, okay, you know, I wasn't crazy about the vertical back window. Right, I'm Th saying, I agree with you. Thunderbird, on yeah, Thunderbird was cool, you know. Um, you know, IRS, you know, back then it was the MN12 chassis, yep. you know, um, or the Mustang. So, so you made the obvious choice. I made the obvious choice. I'm a, I'm a Mustang guy. I, I had a totaled Mustang, took the insurance money, and bought another Mustang. So. And Fox Bodies today, back then, and Fox Bodies back then were crazy affordable. I mean, I paid twelve five for my car. The window sticker on this was sixteen four, sixteen five, something like that. And I did a plan, you know, as yep. an employee. Um, I want to say it was. With taxes and everything, fourteen and change. Right. I put four thousand dollars down, and financed the remaining ten thousand and one hundred dollars or whatever it remember was. Remember what the payment was? The payment was two sixty four a month for four years. I remember because I remember one seventy eight fifty five was the payment on my Fox body. Yeah. What made you get an, uh, an AOD? Uh, well, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I used to live down in the Fort Lauderdale Hollywood area, so uh, you know, right on the. the the uh, county line or border to, to Miami right. was in Miami a lot back then. A lot of friends down there, you know, clubs, whatnot, uh, traffic clubs. We won't go there, uh, but just lots of bad traffic. And I was right. like, you know what? I don't want to road gears every single day going down there. So we ordered the automatic. This car actually has every option that, Ford, it out. that Ford offered, except for uh, factory leather, right? Because Let's, let's admit it, factory Ford leather is not the greatest. Nope. And the flip-up manual roof. That was originally Cabernet? It was originally Cabernet, uh, medium Cabernet red with the uh, um, titanium gray interior. Uh, cloth, uh, like I said, no leather, no sunroof. That's the only two options I didn't get. Right. So it's got rear window defrost, automatic, the five liter, the um, convenience package, so power, everything, locks, windows, crews, you know, all that stuff. Right. Premium now, sound. Now. This car has gone through, just like every magazine guy who's had a Fox Body Mustang, <laughs> whether it's me, Neil. Three engines, two transmissions, two different rear ends. Not because I blew anything up. It no, was, we were it always was just doing upgrades. cool stories yeah. and upgrades and stuff. But let's talk about the current iteration of this car because Spike did, first of all, the paint. I hope the camera picks this up. The paint is just spectacular on it. Yeah. Talk about yeah. that. So... Um, the car was built, uh, minus the paint, was built in a week. So, so back when we were still with the magazine, uh, we were doing a build series called Week to Wicked. Uh, if you've ever watched Overhaul, and it's similar to that. Um, so we actually pre-painted the car, which is what we did with most of the builds, and then shipped it to California, where in a week, the whole car was rebuilt. Suspension, brakes, drivetrain, interior, everything. Um, so the paint being done first, uh, we sent it up to Dean Spikes refinishing in Ocala, and this is actually House of Colors. Uh, it's an orange metallic base, and then finished with House of Colors candy brandy wine on top of it. If you know anything at all about candy paints, every coat it gets darker. So this is three coats of candy, and we stopped. So we wanted it to be similar to the. Um, uh, 2018 Royal Crimson Metallic. I really love that color. I wanted something right. similar. So I wanted it to still be a dark burgundy color, 
but with metallic, something to pop. I was going to say, it still plays the original color Correct. and theme of the car. Yeah. You did kind of keep with an old school theme, right? Centrifugal supercharger, a little bit of a whale tail, but with modern touches front to back. Yeah, so the original idea was we wanted to do a 90s, because it's a 90 Mustang, we want to do a 90s retro build. I mean, obviously the wheels aren't retro, that's one that's one thing that I just had to have. I love these 18s from, from uh, uh, SVE. Absolutely but, perfect wheel for the car, yeah. too. Uh, but this is this is a Ford Racing uh, uh, 302 based off their Boss Block, all forged internals, ready for boost. We did the Vortec. Now this is not the old school V1, uh, but what we did is the V3 self-contained, but with the Heritage gear set. So it has that V1 warble or, or gear wine to it. You know that vintage, that 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 90s sound when you heard a Mustang with a Vortec pull up at the cruise night sure. or, or the starting line. And non-intercooled, which you give up the obviously the intercooling, but it's way simpler as far as the layout yeah. and the piping. Yeah, we did a power pipe uh, with the SCT uh, uh, big air uh, math and all that, but yeah, no intercooler, uh, no max cool. You know, I didn't want to have to move the battery and you know all that extra stuff. We wanted to keep it, you know, lack of a better word, period. Uh, right. You know, same with the uh, the Celine body kit. You know, back in the day. The Celine body kit was was what everybody was running before. Yep. You know, there was like really wild stuff out there, like you know, Canaan and a few others. You know. Right. Huh? So the Celine double stack wing that's on it. Right. Was w one of the first Check mods I did to the car. Uh, I remember you had this back in the day. Yeah. If you're a Celine enthusiast, you'll know that the the double stack it's based off of the stock LX wing, and then Celine added the upper to it. That was yeah. one year only. Only 1990 Celines had that. And this being a 90 Mustang, I was like, well, that's appropriate. You know, it's the right yep. year. As, as far as rear wings go on hatchback Mustangs, to me, it's either the factory wing, the GT wing, okay, on SVO, this wing, or I love that Steeda ducktail. The Steeda extended LX wing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That was a good one, too. So back in the 90s, when uh, when we first did this wing, I had a Dugan Racing Hood. Remember those? Oh, yeah. It had the L88 Camaro-style center with the bead and everything. Yep. It was just different enough. It wasn't, you know, uh, Storm and Norman Mach or... 1 hood or anything like that. Right. So I did the Dugan hood and actually and the Cobra grill insert and this wing all from Dugan just to be a little different going down the road, you know? Right. And then when we redid the car for the Week to Wicked, I was like, I gotta keep this wing. And then we went full Celine on the ground effects. And I was gonna do the, Cervi I was gonna do the Cervini's Terminator right. uh, hood, but they were a little concerned that it wouldn't clear the supercharger. Mm. So we went with the 95 Cobra R. The big test right here, does the hatch stay up on its own? Oh yeah, of course it does. Cause you see what I got. Redline tuning struts, the best in the business. Yep. Got their stainless struts front and rear. Still have the pull shade back here. That's amazing. So oh, a yeah. little sound system, sub amp, four channel amp, little eight, eight, eight inch uh, low profile sub. I've got to say, Mark, you, you did a spectacular job on the interior of this car. And that's usually on Fox bodies, that's an area that gets skipped. You go with the paint, you add the horsepower, Obviously, suspension, wheels, and tires, but yeah, most people, really... most people, they do tinted windows and keep the windows up. <laughs> yep. Why don't you pop the door open? Let's check it out. Sure. I'm gonna see if the door uh, door oh. handle works good too. Oh, that's the best. That's the best feeling Fox body door handle I've ever felt. Look, just the littlest pop, and it's open. Doesn't yep. have that flat wobble. Yep. Well, Show and, it off. And of course, good striker bushings in place, so you don't have that clicky sound right right got to have those ignore my cleaning detail work our detail stuff there but these are um everyone that's got a fox mustang has heard of tmi products yep you know they do the door panels and and um the headliners and all that stuff these believe it or not are tmi products complete seats so besides taking like your stock fox seat and making it look like an 03 cobra seat or something like that they sell complete seats they even sell like one piece fixed back racing seats so these are their tmi uh chicane sports seats um they they do have a adjustable seat back they're set up for for harness belts which i'm going to add um uh full leather with the the uh suede uh strip which matches 
the uh, the dash trim and the suede headliner. Yeah, I so see you got the suede on the dash, which is a what a beautiful touch. New speaker grills, which have like a, um, a soft mesh as opposed yeah, to Yeah, I did speaker grill cloth over the that. factory that plastic. That looks really good. I did it in the wow. back, too. Look at it, this. Just, just, really... to, just for something different, get rid of that 90s plastic ribbing, you know. That really has a, a an upscale look to it. And, and you then... know, it gives it that, like, you know, modern, you know, Lincoln or Lexus or, you know, some, you know. Yeah, it's a higher higher end deal. And then the door panels, custom door panels and... Are these new door poles and, and door uh, armrest? Uh, the armrest base is factory, just repainted. Um, new armrest pad and the chrome strip is new. The, all that I got from National Parts Depot. Okay. Uh, yeah, the interior is about, uh, well, the door panels, seats, headliner, and the carpet, which this is a new, I want to say a new product. I haven't seen them really push it. I guess when you call uh, TMI, it's not on their website, you have to call them. It's a cut and sew show carpet. Uh, so it's actually done in sections with like a surged or bound edge mm -hmm. versus a one piece molded carpet. So that's all TMI. And then all the switch gear, like the window switches, um, turn signal switch, you know, all that replacement parts are all from National Parts Depot. Gotcha. Uh, you know, they do a great job with the, with the reproduction parts. Um, uh, I've actually helped them with a few items like the uh, when we had the car apart for paint, right. the, the uh, fuel door, you know, how the, the fuel door has the, uh, the drain yeah. that goes out to the back bumper. That's not reproduced and it takes a special fitting and a clamp. And uh, we took mine off, which was in mint condition. Right. The hose was a little, little hard, but it was in mint condition. Sent it up to NPD and they reproduced it. So that's awesome. You know, yeah, I mean, help, help helping the industry. We, you know, we got to keep these cars alive. So exactly. Um, so we've been having a great time walking around with Mark, hanging out here at Swan Brewing. It's always fun coming out on Mustang Day, seeing everybody walking around, checking out the cars. We appreciate everybody out there in Mustang Land and everybody who's followed the Rev and Evan channel. Hope you're having a great day. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you want to see, and have yourself a great day. Let's go get a beer. Let's do it.